guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, this one's going to be an exciting one. Um, as you know, the chassis is now rolling. Um, so now it's time to actually start preparing it to be driving. Uh, so you can see behind me, I have two junkyard CV axles that I picked up today. Um, and behind the camera, there is a radiator cooling fan that I am getting ready to mount on top of the frame to add some airflow through the engine bay because of the way it's enclosed in there. Um, these two axles and that fan, $25 total at the junkyard, saves me a ton of money. And these were actually easy. I found them on the ground inside of a small differential. I'm assuming from a Subaru. Um, and all I had to do was pry them out. And here we go. So I'm probably going to cut these axles off, weld on keyed one inch shaft so that I can adapt them to work inside of my wheel bearings and mount to my differential. Um, so that's what we're going to be working on today as well as cutting this shaft and um, making it the right length for my A-arms there. So I'm going to get working on that um, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so now we have our existing um, wheel shaft, I don't know what to call it, um, and we need to connect that to this. Now I've decided that I want to use this end of these axles for the differential end of the A-arms because this has a heavier steel piece here, so when I cut these axles off, I have something nice and flat to weld a plate to that I can bolt um, or mount to the differential axle there. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, but I have to decide what I'm doing with this end. I think that this is one inch diameter right here. This is not, but I think this is, and I think I can cut this down, put it in a piece of angle iron, and weld it to this, hopefully without any wobble. Now the only problem is that the pivot point is going to be fairly far out, which we'll just have to make sure everything clears, uh, but we will see how that goes. Hold on. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut at this line here, cutting off the splines, put a piece of angle iron under here, clamp it, uh, and then clamp my shaft down next to it in the angle iron. So that should keep everything in line and straight. Then I'll weld it, grind it flat, weld it again, grind it again, make sure everything's nice and strong. And if I do it properly, it should slide into that bearing all the way up to this point here, which should give me plenty of clearance and it should be perfect, but we'll see. We got to see how it goes here. Um, but uh, I guess that's what I'm going to be doing now. I'm going to start by cleaning them. Those are nice and clean, very nice machine finish, and they were inside of the differential in the transmission fluid, so they're obviously not rusty or anything. Um, I guess now the next step is to cut them. I'm just a little bit apprehensive because I hate to destroy this, but yeah, I think I'm going to cut it right there. That should work. That one, I'm waiting for some glue to dry to seal up the boot. That was the only issue I found with one of the boots had a seal leak. But uh, other than that, they look really good. And that's easy. I can always replace the boots. Easy enough job.
Okay, so here you can, you can see the old drive shaft, and here is the new. This one I just finished up. It's fully installed on the cart right now, um, and it's looking great. It's uh, adjusted to the proper length, all the shafts are welded on, and it's actually bolted in and fully operational. Now, what I ended up doing was actually taking the hubs off of my old universal joints and welding them to the steel on the inner joint there. The outer is just the shaft that used to go through the wheel now on there.